Hello everyone, a very warm welcome to Testport MBA Prep. So we are starting with algebra, which is an also an important topic for CAT because immediately after arithmetic, this is the only chapter which, which has got that weightage, right? So algebra is very simple. Just uh, need to have good command over some concepts, right? Basic concepts. So if you have that clarity, then then you can you can solve uh, the problems easily. So let's look into the agenda of this session. We will look into the polynomials. What are polynomials? The nature of solutions of linear equations. The graphical representation. Problems on edges. Then we will move on to the logic on reversed numbers, successive distribution problems linear equations in two two and three variables and the universal methods to solve any problem on the linear equations let's look into polynomials what are polynomials see poly stands for many and nomials uh, nomial stands for terms right so now what are these terms the terms can uh, can have three elements these can be constants variables and exponents now what are constants any number right any number let's say uh, minus 3 minus 2 by 17 or 5 any number is regarded as constant and what are variables the elements in which the the value is not fixed let's say a or b right a b y z so all these are variables so the value varies that's why we call them as variables and another name we have another name for variables which is unknowns so variables are also known as unknowns and what are exponents well exponents are whole numbers and these are the values in which the variables can be raised for instance take x cube here 3 is a whole number and this is an exponent. If we consider x power 1 by 3 or y, y power minus 5 let's say. These cannot be exponents because exponents cannot take the fractional values or the negative values. They take only the whole numbers from 0 to infinity. And if we consider x power 1 by 3 this is not a term in a polynomial because we shouldn't have fraction and if we consider y power 1 by uh, y power minus 5 this too is not a term in a polynomial because we shouldn't have a negative term so when we have many terms like uh, connected together let's say 3x square plus 7y right what is this this is a binomial We shall take one more example 4x square plus 3y square plus 10z what is this this is a trinomial so a polynomial is, ge is uh, generally a name for a binomial for a trinomial right so we can have any number of terms in a polynomial what is the degree of polynomial so the degree of any polynomial just gives us an idea about the number of solutions to that polynomial for instance if we consider 3x cube plus 5x square plus 9y here what is the power here power of 3x cube is 3 what about this one 5x square the power is 2 and the power of 9y is 1 now the greatest of all these is known as the degree of a polynomial which one is the greatest 3 is greatest so the degree of this polynomial is 3 now let's take one more example 2x square 2x square y plus 6y plus 11 now what is the degree here 2 plus 1 which is 3 this one this is 1 and this is 0 so in this case 3 is the degree of this polynomial nature of solutions of linear equations 
let's say we consider 3x is equal to 15 now how do we solve this x is equal to 5 right so x is equal to 5 this is it's it's any it's a unique solution so what is meant by solution solution is anything which satisfies the condition here 5 is a solution because if we substitute 5 in the place of x this satisfies lhs it satisfies rhs right so that's why 5 is a solution we shall take one more example which is 2x plus 5 which is equal to 12 so here we can have infinite number of solutions because we can substitute any value for x and we can adjust the value of y to equalize the other side for instance if we take x as 1 then we have to adjust the value for y so that this value becomes will be equal to 12 so to solve a linear equation in two variables we must have two equations so if we have one more equation like this let's say 3x plus 4y this is equal to 25 then we can solve these two equations uh, we can eliminate and we can um, find the solutions so what did we understand what did we observe here here if we notice so here we have one variable so one equation is sufficient in the second case we have two variables we have two variables in one equation and we need two equations to solve so let us generalize what we have understood so to find a unique solution so to find a unique solution to a linear equation in n variables we need at least at least n such equations now why i am stressing at least n is there any importance for at least in this case yes there is importance because if we have two equations sometimes we cannot find unique solutions see for instance if we take 2x plus 3y which is equal to 12 and 4x plus 6y which is equal to 100 can you find a unique solution for this no you cannot find a unique solution for this because if we divide 4x plus 6y is equal to 100 with 2 then we will have 2x plus 2x plus 3y this is equal to 50 if we divide this one with 2 so either 2x plus 3y must be equal to 12 or 2x plus 3y must be equal to 50 both are not possible so here in spite of having two equations we are unable to solve we, we are unable to find a unique solution at least n such such uh, equations are needed now how can we know whether we we can find out unique solutions for equation or not so we have certain conditions for that let us look into one by one let's say the cost of two mangoes and three apples is rupees 50 now can you find out the cost of a mango and an, and an apple the uh, individual costs can you find out now no you cannot find out because as we already discussed in previous slides you must at least require two equations okay let let uh, i will give you one more equation 4m plus 6a is equal to 100 now can you solve no you cannot solve because both the equations are same now what did i do i just multiplied the first equation with 2 and i got this second equation so as both the equations are same we will have infinite number of solutions and these are dependent equations let me write it here and just observe here here this is a1 a2 the coefficients and this is b1 and b2 and this one is c1 and c2 so a1 by a2 
which is 2 by 4 that is 1 by 2 and 3 by 6 that is 1 by 2 and 50 by 100 that is 1 by 2 so a1 by a2 is equal to b1 by b2 this is equal to c1 by c2 so when these all all are equal we'll have infinite number of solutions like in this case if we move on to the second case where i have given you two mangoes plus three apples the price of two two mangoes and three apples is 50 now you ask me not to provide any equation by just multiplying the first equation so that's the reason why i'm giving you the one more equation now just find out just try to find out the values of m and a my equation to you is 4m plus 6a is equal to 70 can you find out the value of the price of mango and an apple now too you cannot find out because if you divide the second equation with 2 what do you arrive at you arrive at 2m plus 3a which is equal to 35 now too you cannot solve because 2m plus 3a either it must be equal to 50 or it must be equal to 35 so in this case a1 by a2 is equal to b1 by b2 is not equal to c1 by c2 so here we have no solution and these equations are inconsistent let us move on to the final case which is 2 mangoes plus 3 apples is equal to 50 rupees and the second one is 3 mangoes plus 4 apples is equal to 70 here we will have a unique solution because we can find out the values of the price of mango as well as the price of an apple hence this is independent these equations are independent and consistent and if, and if we observe a1 by a2 is not equal to b1 by b2 so when a1 by a2 is not equal to b1 by b2 then we can say that we will have a unique solution right just observe these properties see cat doesn't test you these properties directly it never tests you but the application is what you must know because that can be helpful in solving the problems on algebra so how can we apply these properties let's say 3x plus 4y is equal to 60 and 9x plus 12y is equal to k now for what value of k these two equations have infinite solutions how can you find out just use the property um, the condition for the inf infinite solutions is a1 by a2 is equal to b1 by b2 this is this must be equal to c1 by c2 so 3 by 9 this is equal to 1 by 3 4 by 12 is equal to 1 by 3 and 60 by k must be equal to 1 by 3 so 60 by 180 so k must be equal to 180 hope you understood this is equal to 1 by 3 this is equal to 1 by 3 so this must also be equal to 1 by 3 so if this one must be equal to 1 by 3 k must be equal to 180 so in this way we will we can apply these properties so let us move on to the graphical representation of the linear equations the solutions if we consider two equations 2x plus 3y this is equal to 12 and 4x plus 6y is equal to 12 now if we substitute 0 in in the place of x then the solutions for this equation is 0 comma 4 because if x is 0 then y will be 4 so where can we plot the points so this is 0 and 0 comma 4 will somewhere be here so this is 0 comma 4 okay so let, uh, let us take uh, one more pair if we substitute x with 0 or with 6 
then what will be the value of y the value of y will be 0 6 comma 0 so this satisfies the condition so 6 2 is a 12 and if we substitute 0 in place of y then it will be 12 is equal to 12 so this is satisfying this and if we plot this on uh, plot this point in in the graph 6 comma 0 can be plotted somewhere here this is 0 and this is 6 comma 0 and if we draw a line if we draw a line this is intersecting the first solution as well as the second solution that is why these lines are known as the linear equations these equations are known as the linear equations why because the solutions whatever the point is there on this particular line each and every point is a solution of this equation and if we consider the second equation these uh, solutions of second equation we can take it as 0 comma 2 and the second pair as 3 comma 0 just check both both these solutions satisfy the condition so and if we plot 0 comma 2 and 3 comma 0 0 comma 2 we can mark somewhere here 0 comma 2 and uh, 3 comma 0 we can mark it somewhere here this is 3 comma 0 so if we join this so if we join these two points these two points are also on the same line so whatever the points are there on this line all these points are the solutions for this equation and these two lines are parallel they are not intersecting if they intersect each other then that intersecting point is known as the solution for both the equations since these two lines are not intersecting we cannot find the solution for these two equations see in the previous slide we discussed the condition for no solution what is the condition a1 by a2 is equal to b1 by b2 is not equal to c1 by c2 graphically this is the representation but this is the actual condition this is the graphical representation you can check now 2 by 4 1 by 2 3 by 6 1 by 2 this is not equal to 12 by 12 which is 1 by 1 hope this is clear to you so if a1 by a2 is equal to b1 by b2 then the graph will be something like this because if this condition is satisfied then we will have a unique solution and in the case of unique solution the lines meet at one point and if if a1 by a2 is equal to b1 by b2 if this is also equal to c1 by c2 then our first line will be here right this is line 1 and the second line will also be on this line the second line is also be will will the second line will also be on this line so in this case we will have infinitely many solutions because each and every point of line 1 is also a point for line 2 so the solution for both the equations are common and they are many in case of no solution in which the condition is a1 by a2 is equal to b1 by b2 this is not equal to c1 by c2 what will be the graph the lines will be parallel so this is l1 and this is l2 since they are not intersecting at any point they are parallel and we have no solution here they are intersecting at one point we have one solution here they are intersecting at all the points so we have infinitely many solutions and here no intersection so no solution let us solve this four years ago the age of a person was four times the age of his son four years hence the age of the person will be eight years less than three times the age of his son how many years from now will the sum of the ages be 90 
ओके सो लेट इज कंसिडर द एज ऑफ द पर्सन बी पी एंड द एज ऑफ द सन बी एस फोर इयर्स एगो सो फोर इयर्स एगो मीन्स पी माइनस फोर वर्स फोर टाइम्स द एज ऑफ हिज सन फोर इयर्स एगो वॉट कैन बी द एज ऑफ हिज सन एस माइनस फोर बट ही हेव फोर टाइम्स द एज ऑफ हिज सन सो फोर टाइम्स फोर इंटू एस माइनस फोर now what is the second condition four years hence the age of the person will be 8 years less than 3 okay four years hence means p plus 4 right this will be equal to 3 times of the age of his son four years hence what will be the age of his son it will be s plus 4 but here 3 times is given so 3 into s plus 4 Eight less than so minus eight. So just solve this. P will be equal to three into s plus four minus twelve, and this will be equal to three s plus twelve minus twelve, and P will be equal to three s. Right? If we consider this equation, P minus four will be equal to four s minus sixteen. P is equal to four s minus twelve. Here P is three s, so this will be equal to four s minus twelve, and s is equal to twelve. So if s is equal to twelve, then three s will be equal to thirty six, right? But here, what is the question? How many years from now will the sum of their ages be ninety? Now, what is the total age? Thirty-six plus twelve, which is forty-eight. Now this must be, this this must become ninety. So what is the difference here? Forty-two. Forty-two is the difference, but for one person in a year, the age increases by one year. For two persons, it will be two years. So by two, this will be equal to twenty-one. So from now. After twenty one years, the sum of their ages be ninety years. Ninety. Let's solve this one also. Many years ago, when Mr. A was asked as to who between A and B was elder, he said, "Two years from now, I will be twice as old as B will be three times as as old as he was three times ago. How old is B? Okay. So, what is the condition for A?" Let let us assume the ages of A and B as A and B. So, what is the condition of A? Two years from now, so two years from now, so A plus two will be twice as old as I was two years ago. Two years ago, what can be his age? A minus two will be twice. So two. Into a minus two, this will uh, this will be equal to a plus two. So a will be equal to six in this case. If we consider the case of Mr. B, it will be three years from now. So b plus three will be three times as old as he was three years ago. He before three years, his his age was b minus three and This is equal to three times. So three into b minus three is equal to b plus three. Three into b minus three is equal to b plus three. So if we solve this, we will get b as six. Now, what is the question? How old is Mr. B today? If Mr. A was asked the question twenty-seven years back. So if twenty-seven years back, this was the question. Then the present age of A is six plus twenty seven, and the present age of B is six plus twenty seven. This will be equal to thirty three, thirty three. So our answer is thirty three. Both are of the same age. Logic of reverse numbers, super concept. If you are aware of this, well and good. If not, don't skip this. This is a super concept. So if we Take a two-digit number. Let's say this is applied for any number, but 
let's first take two digit number let's take t u for our convenience u is in the units place t is of tens place now what is the value of t we can uh, write it as 10t plus units place which is u right the number which is in units place we can mention it as u now if we reverse this then what do we get ut now we can write t plus 10u right as u is in the tens place we can uh, make, make it 10u now what is the difference difference is 90 minus 9u i will also tell you how to apply right i will we will solve some problems some good problems regarding this concept so don't worry just listen so if you take 9 as common then it will be t minus u so the difference is 9 into modulus of t minus u now what can be the sum sum is equal to uh, 10t plus t which is 11t and 10u plus u which is 11u right if we take 11 as common it will be t plus u you must remember these two if you remember this then you will easily remember these two how can we apply let's say the let's take a number two two digit number let's take 94 now according to this what is the difference between 94 and the reverse of this number which is 49 what is the difference let's uh, directly substitute here 9 into what is t minus u which is 9 minus 4 this is equal to 5 so 9 into 5 is equal to 45 are we getting 45 let's see 94 minus reverse of this 49 this is 5 and this is 4 see we got 45 this is a simple application but if the question is somewhat complicated then this will definitely be very handy let us solve this okay so before uh, solving this example we will apply that concept with a three digit number as well so if we consider a three digit number let us take h t and u now so h is in hundreds place so we can write it as 100 h and t is in tens place so it will be 10 t and u what is the reverse of this number it is u t h now u can be written as 100 u plus t is 10 t and h is 1 h if we subtract what if you take the difference it will be 99 h minus 99 u and take 99 as common and 99 into h minus u see h minus u or u minus h it depends on the number which is greater right if h is greater then it will be h minus u if u is greater then it will be u minus h that's why we are putting modulus right so this is the difference this concept can be apl applied to any digit right if if it were a five digit number if it were a 99 digit number it can be applied anywhere let's solve this question now a two digit number in is such that the sum of its digits is thrice the difference of its digits if the number exceeds the number formed by reversing its digits by 36 find the number so the two digit number let us say um, let us take it as tu okay now this exceeds the number formed by reversing its digits what is the number reverse number ut so this exceeds the uh, the number reversing it means tu must be greater than ut which means which which means t must be greater than u right unless t is greater than u t u cannot be greater than ut and the condition is given if the number exceeds the number formed 
by reversing its digits by 36 and that is the uh, the sum of its digits is thrice the difference of its digits so what is the difference formula we learnt just now difference is 9 into t minus u this will be equal to what is the difference here difference is 36 in this case 36 right so t minus u is 4 and t plus u is 3 into 4 and here we have t minus u which is equal to 4 right we can solve these two equations and we will get t2 is equal to 16 t as 8 and if t is 8 just substitute in one of the equations we will get u as 4 here we are asked to find the number so t and u 8 4 84 84 is the answer now what is this question the difference between a three digit number and the number found by reversing its digits is 3 396 the sum of the units and tens digits is one less than the hundreds digit what is the maximum possible difference between two such numbers so three digit number let's take h t and u and in three digit number how did we calculate the difference difference is 99 modulus of into modulus of h minus u this is what is the difference here 396 so 396 h minus u is equal to 4 now h minus u is equal to 4 it can be h minus u which is equal to 4 or u minus h can be equal to 4 anyone but here the sum of the units and tens digits so u plus t is 1 less than hundreds digit so 1 less than minus 1 less than hundreds digit if you observe here u plus t u plus something is equal to h minus 1 so definitely h is greater than u if h is greater than u u minus h is not possible h minus u will be the condition so just solve this t plus 1 will be equal to h minus u and t plus 1 is equal to 4 t will be equal to 3 so t is equal to 3 we want the maximum possible difference between two such numbers so t is equal to 3 we will just adjust the values of h and u if h is 4 then u will be 0 right h is 4 u will be 0 in order to satisfy this one and if h is 5 you will be 1 6 2 7 3 8 mm, 8 4 let me write it here if h is 9 and uh, if h is 9 you will be 5 t remains same the value of t remains same which is 3 3 3 and 3 now we are asked to find out the maximum possible difference of two such numbers what is the maximum possible difference the least number and the highest uh, the greatest number just subtract these two 9 35 minus 4 30 this will be equal to 505 this is our answer so these questions came in cat some point of time or the other and these are these concepts definitely help you in number system as well as in linear equations also so please practice this a simple concept let's move on to this question Ujwal uses the same set of four numbers each each digit appearing exactly once to form his four digit pin numbers for his ATM cards he forgot the pin number for his SBI and the city ATM cards if he knows the uh, knows that the difference of the two pin numbers is a four digit number with four two and seven being the three digits what is the fourth digit of the difference all right so this is a four digit number a b c d right let us 
make it a, a b let us assume it as a b c d so if this is the value then the value of a is thousand a and the value of b can be taken as hundred b and the value of uh, c can be taken as ten c and that of d is d okay so the second one can be of any order it can be c d b a it can be c d a b right c d a b if this is the order let's assume after that we will generalize this let's assume the second one as c d a b now how can we write if this is the value c d a b so c what is the value of c thousand c so plus thousand c plus the value of d is d is in hundreds place so it is hundred d the value of b b is in units place so it is b and value of a is a is in tens place so it is 10 a now just take the difference what is the difference here 990 a plus 99 b so this will be minus of 990 c and this is minus 99 d if you observe 990 99 990 and 99 so these are the multiples of 9 these are the multiples of 9 so no matter what is what the order is it can be c d a b it can be a d c b right a can be here a can be here right a can be anywhere but the result what you get after subtracting all those will be multiples of 9 and what is our question the difference of the two pin two pin numbers is a four digit number with four two and seven being the three digits what is the fourth digit of the difference now if this entire thing is a multiple of nine then the sum of the digits must also be a multiple of nine right so four plus two which is six six plus seven thirteen right thirteen how much to be added in order to make it a multiple of 9? What is the nearest multiple? Ne nearest multiple is 18. So 13 plus 5 is 18. So 5 is our answer. So let us move on to the next one. The owner of a local jewelry store uh, hired three watchmen to guard his diamonds. But a thief still got in and stole some diamonds. On the way out, the thief met each watchman one at a time. To, to each, he gave 12 of the diamonds he had then and uh, two, two more besides. And he escaped with one diamond. And how many did he steal originally? Interesting question. Okay, so the first watchman, let's assume he has, uh, he initially had a uh, x number of diamonds right so when he met the first watchman how much did he offer him how much did he give him just look at the condition to each he gave sorry this is not 12 this is 1 by 2 okay so to each he gave half of the diamonds he had he had then and two more besides so initially he had x diamonds so half of the diamonds he had so x by 2 right and also he gave two more diamonds plus 2 so for the first watchman he gave half of what he had that is half of x plus 2 then what will be the remaining diamonds that he had he would have had x minus the initial quantity minus this one right x minus x by 2 plus 2 minus and minus into minus this will be minus and 2 so this will be half of x minus 2 right these are the remaining diamonds after the first watchman now uh, second watchman now from this remaining amount remaining diamonds he again had to give half of these diamonds plus Two more so half of 1 by 2 into x minus 2 plus 2 this will be equal to 1 by 4x plus 1 so this is 
the quantity of diamonds the number of diamonds which the thief gave them to the second watchman and what will be the remaining diamonds remaining will be the previously what what he had minus now what he had given so the remaining by the end of the second case will be 1 by 2 x minus 2 minus this one 1 by 4 x minus 1 so this will be equal to 1 by 4 x minus 3 this is the remaining now let's move on to the third watchman what about him now from this he gave half of the diamonds plus 2 so half of 1 by 4 x minus 3 plus 2 this will be equal to 1 by 8 x plus 0 0.5 now what are the remaining diamonds he is left with 1 by 4 x minus 3 minus 1 by 8 x minus 0 0.5 this one minus this one so this will be equal to x by 8 minus 3.5 and he escaped with one diamond right so this will be equal to 1 and x will be equal to 36 so initially he had 36 diamonds option a is the answer alok went to a casino to play a card game he played seven rounds and after each after each round he doubled his amount and gave an amount x to his friend after playing seven rounds he had 127 rupees find the sum of the digits of, of the least possible value of x okay let's say the initial amount that alok had is a right initial amount that he had was a now this is the first round this is the second round this is the third round let's say so he is doubling the amount right after each and every round he is doubling the amount so he is doubling the amount here this is the remaining one and he is giving some part some x to the x amount to his friend after each and every round so for the first round it is if it's 2a then he gave x part from this 2a to his friend so the remaining is 2a minus x he is left with 2a minus x again he is investing this 2a minus x here and he doubled doubled that so 2a becomes 4a 4a minus 2x now from this from this 4a minus 2x he again gave x to his friend so 4a minus 2x minus x becomes 4a minus 3x again he is investing this here in the third round so this will uh, and he is doubling so he is making it 8a minus 6x and he is giving x part to his friend so this will be 8a minus 7x right okay so if you observe no need to uh, solve for all the seven rounds do you observe any pattern here see 2a 4a 6 uh, 8a 2 4 8 2 power 1 2 power 2 2 power 3 1 3 and 7 2 power 1 minus 1 2 power 2 minus 1 and 2 power 3 minus 1 2 power 3 minus 1 is 7 2 power 2 minus 1 is 3 and 2 power 1 minus 1 is 1 this is the pattern but we are asked to find out after playing 7 rounds so for remaining um, for the 7th round it will be 2 power 7 of a right 2 power 7 of a minus 7 is 2 power 3 so this will be 2 power 7 of x so minus 1 of x this is for 7th round hope this is clear this is for 7th round 
now if we solve this 2 power 7 this is 128a minus 127x this will be equal to 127 127 is divisible by 127 this is divisible by 127 this has to be divisible by 127 128a must be divisible by 127 because if we observe 127 and 128 these are co primes and a must be divisible by 127 right a must be divisible by 127 but we are asked to find out the sum of the digits as we know a must be 127 because it has to be divisible by 127 128 into 127 by 127 this is divisible by 127 right so we know that a is equal to 127 we are asked to find out the sum of the digits sum of the digits is 1 plus 2 plus 7 this is equal to 10 10 is the answer so linear equations in three variables we solved uh, we learned how to solve linear equations in two variables linear equations in three variables is almost the same but here we will have we can also change that three variables into two variables and we can still solve it but if the question is somewhat more complex then the same method that we have used previously shouldn't be used it, it may not be valid in that case what you can do is we can use the matrix method which is very easy and most of you still remember that so what is that matrix method matrix uh, that that is also known as uh, Kramer's rule so if we have elements such as a1 a2 a3 and a4 right this is the matrix what is a matrix it is see we use that to store information store data so this is a matrix matrix is always represented in the square brackets whereas if we have if we want to find out the determinant of this matrix we will represent in in between the straight lines right this is for determinant this is for matrix let's say if this is the matrix uh, if a is equal to this matrix and this the debt of a will be debt of a will be equal to a1 a2 a3 a4 whatever the elements are there whatever the entities are there these are known as the elements of the matrix and if we find out if we if we want to find out the determinant or the debt of this matrix right matrix a then how can we find out we have to just cross multiply for the, for the first step is a1 into a4 minus a2 into a3 not simply cross multiplying we have to assign the symbol minus we have to subtract so the first step is from left hand to right hand side this 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 is the first one a1 a4 and the second one is a2 a3 so this is how we calculate determinant of a or determinant of any any matrix so what is the order the, these elements are arranged in rows and columns so this is a row and this is a column so how many rows are there two rows are there how many columns are there this is one column this is one more column so the order of this matrix is two by two two rows and two columns and for two by two matrix this is how we calculate the determinant of the two by two matrix if we consider a three by three matrix let's say b is equal to a1 a2 a3 b1 b2 b3 and c1 c2 c3 what can be the determinant of b how, how to calculate the determinant of b it's very simple just take a1 this is the first step right and ignore this value and this value just concentrate on this part see a1 into 
பி டூ பி த்ரீ சி டூ சி த்ரீ ரைட் ப்ளஸ் நான் வாட் டி யூ டூ இஸ் கன்சிடர் திஸ் அண்ட் இக்னோர் திஸ் ஒன் திஸ் ஃபோக்கஸ் ஆன் தீஸ் டூ ரைட் ஸோ ஏ டூ இன்டூ பி த்ரீ சி த்ரீ பி ஒன் சி ஒன் டோன்ட் ரைட் பி ஒன் சி ஒன் ஃபர்ஸ்ட் அண்ட் பி த்ரீ சி த்ரீ செகண்ட் இஃப் யூ ரைட் தென் யூ ஹாவ் டு சேஞ்ச் தி சிம்பிள் வி ஹாவ் டு மேக் இட் மைனஸ் ஹியர் மைனஸ் ஆஃப் ஏ டூ இன்டூ பி ஒன் சி ஒன் அண்ட் பி த்ரீ சி த்ரீ இன்ஸ்டெட் ஆஃப் தேட் டேக் ஆல் தி வேல்யூஸ் ஆஸ் பாசிட்டிவ் அண்ட் யூ கேன் ஜஸ்ட் மூவ் ஃபார்வர்ட் ஸோ ஏ டூ ஜஸ்ட் மூவ் ஃபார்வர்ட் பி த்ரீ சி த்ரீ அண்ட் தென் நெக்ஸ்ட் ஒன் பி ஒன் சி ஒன் ப்ளஸ் வாட் அபவுட் ஏ த்ரீ ஏ த்ரீ ஸோ இக்னோர் தி திஸ் வேல்யூ பி த்ரீ சி த்ரீ நோ த வேல்யூஸ் ஆர் பி ஒன் சி ஒன் அண்ட் பி டூ சி டூ பி ஒன் சி ஒன் அண்ட் பி டூ சி டூ யூ கேன் கேல்குலேட் திஸ் ஆஸ் யூஷுவல் ஸோ ஏ ஒன் இஃப் யூ கன்சிடர் ஏ ஒன் இன் டூ வாட் இஸ் பி டூ பி டூ சி த்ரீ மைனஸ் ஆஃப் பி த்ரீ சி டூ ப்ளஸ் ஏ டூ இன்டூ பி த்ரீ சி ஒன் மைனஸ் பி ஒன் சி த்ரீ ப்ளஸ் ஏ த்ரீ இன்டூ பி ஒன் சி டூ இன்டூ பி டூ பி ஒன் சி டூ மைனஸ் பி டூ சி ஒன் ஸோ எவ்ரி திங் இஸ் சேம் லைக் திஸ் பட் தி ஃபார்மேஷன் இஃப் யூ ஃபார்ம் திஸ் தென் எவ்ரி திங் வில் பி ஈஸி ரைட் ஸோ திஸ் இஸ் த மெத்தட் ஃபார் டூ வேரியபிள்ஸ் திஸ் இஸ் த மெத்தட் ஃபார் த்ரீ வேரியபிள்ஸ் for two variables a uh, matrix method is not very recommended because we can easily solve by so by uh, we can easily solve the two equations whereas for three variables it's better you follow the matrix method we'll solve we will apply this method in some problems in this session so please don't worry about that i will just summarize what we have learned here see let us take the case of two variables if we have a1x plus b1y is equal to c1 and a2x plus b2y is equal to c2 so these two are linear equations now if we want to find out the debt then we can find out like this a1 a2 b1 b2 so just take the coefficients of x and y what is delta x if we want to calculate delta x just ignore the values of the co- coefficients of x instead of coefficients of x we can substitute c1 and c2 the constants b1 b2 remain same b1 b2 if it's delta y ignore the values of y coefficients of y a1 a2 remain the same and instead of coefficients of y which are b1 and b2 just substitute the constants c1 and c2 now what is x x is equal to delta x by det right now what is y y is equal to det of y by det to calculate the value of x we can we, we can use this to calculate the value of y we can use this and here also we have unique solution we have no solution and we have infinitely many solution conditions if debt is not equal to 0 right if this is not equal to 0 if the denominator is not equal to 0 in this case then we will have unique solution so if debt is equal to 0 we have two cases the first case is if debt of x is not equal to 0 and debt of y is also not equal to 0 in this case we will have no solution why no solution so if debt of x is not equal to 0 so it has some value whereas uh, the denominator is 0 right debt is 0 then some value by 0 which has no solution so that's why it has no solution whereas if the numerator as well as the denominator are 0 0 by 
it is infinitely many solutions infinitely many solutions if both det of x is equal to det of y is equal to 0 if the numerators are uh, are equal to 0 as well as the denominator which is this det of det is equal to 0 see when we apply this in our problems then it will be very clear for you now let us take the linear equations in three variables case let's take three variables a1x plus b1y plus c1z is equal to d1 a2x plus b2y plus c2z is equal to d2 a3x plus b3y plus c3z is equal to now what is debt debt determinant is equal to the coefficients of x the coefficients of y and coefficients of z which are a1 a2 a3 b1 b2 b3 and c1 c2 c3 right how to find debt of x debt of x is instead of taking the coefficients of x substitute the values the constants so d1 d2 d3 remaining values uh, are same b1 b2 b3 c1 c2 c3 how can we calculate debt of y instead of taking y the coefficients of y substitute the constants all the remaining values are same a1 a2 a3 d1 d2 d3 and c1 c2 c3 so what about z debt of z is equal to a1 a2 a3 b1 b2 b3 and d1 d2 d3 okay so in the same way how can we calculate x x is equal to debt of x my debt of x by debt debt is determinant so y is equal to debt of y by debt and z is equal to debt of z by debt again we have three cases like the case with the linear equations in two variables first let me erase this so here if debt is not equal to zero and debt is equal to zero these are the main cases two cases right and under this we have one more to, um, two more if debt of x debt of y and debt of z not equal to 0 and debt of x debt of y and debt of z equal to 0 all these are not equal to 0 and all these are equal to 0 two cases in the first case we have no solution whereas in second case we have infinitely many solutions here whereas the debt of uh, debt is not equal to 0 we have a unique solution why because x is equal to debt of x by debt if debt is not equal to zero that means the denominator has some value right if the denominator has some value then we will get some uh, we will get a number it won't be invalid that's the reason why we have unique solution we will definitely get a unique solution if debt of x is or debt of y or debt of z is equal to is not equal to zero and debt of debt is equal to zero this has some value let's say this is two and the denominator is zero in which we have no solution right zero by two is equal to two but two by zero is not equal to zero in case if um, in case debt of x is equal to 0 and debt of uh, then debt is, uh, is also equal to 0 then this is undefined so we'll have infinitely many solutions 0 by 0 we have many solutions infinitely many solutions so any number so a natural number when it's 
denominator is 0 is undefined and in 0 by 0 case it will be infinitely many solutions please remember this we are going to apply this now Ajay has 131 coins consisting of 1 rupee 50 pies and 25 pies coins the total value of the coins is rupees 65 if the 50 pies and 25 pies coins are interchanged the value comes down by rupees 3 find the number of 1 rupee coins he has all right so Ajay has total 131 coins so number of let the number of uh, 1 rupee coins be x number of uh, 50 pies coins be y and number of the uh, 25 pies coins be z so x plus y plus z is equal to 131 total are 131 coins what is the value of 1 rupee coin it's 1x right the value of 50 pies coin can be taken as 0.5y and the value of 25 pies coin can can be taken as 0.25z which is equal to what is the total value total value is 65 rupees now if you multiply this with 4 what do we get we get 4x plus 2y plus z is equal to 260 all right and the condition is if 50 pies and 25 pies coins are interchanged so just interchange them we'll get 1x plus 0.25y plus 0.5z will be equal to 60 62 why 62 the value comes down by rupees 3 after the interchange so 65 minus 3 is 62 so if we multiply this with 4 again we'll get 4x plus y plus 2z is equal to 2, 248 right now we shall find the debt i think you you must remember you must have remembered that to calculate debt we will take the coefficients of x y and z so what is the coefficient in the first case this is the first equation this is the second one and this is the third one right so one this is four and this is four one four four what is the uh, coefficients of y one two and one so one two and one coefficients of z one one and two so one one and two so how to calculate this debt see we want only number of one rupee coins that means we want we have to calculate only the value of x so no need to calculate debt of y and debt of z just calculate z debt of x so debt of x is equal to ignore the value of the coefficients of x substitute the values of constants 131 260 and 248 what about the second one the value the coefficients of y and z remain the same so 1 2 1 2 and 1 and 1 1 2 1 1 2 this is uh, debt of x let me erase this part so how can we calculate the determinant d is equal to first take the value of uh, this one first value 1 into 2 into 2 4 minus 1 into 1 1 plus consider the second one 1 into 4 into 1 which is 4 minus 4 into 2 which is 8 plus 1 into now ignore this this uh, column 4 into 1 which is 4 minus 2 into 4 which is 8 just solve this this is 3 this is minus 4 and minus 4 so minus 5 this is debt see debt can be represented like this or it can also be represented like this so what is 
डेट ऑफ एक्स डेट ऑफ एक्स इज नाउ कैलकुलेट फॉर दिस वन थर्टी वन इंटू नाउ इग्नोर दिस कॉलम दिस फोकस ऑन दिस टू इंटू टू माइनस वन इंटू वन फोर माइनस वन लाइक वाइज वन वन इंटू दिस इज टू फोर्टी एट टू फोर्टी एट माइनस टू सिक्सटी इंटू टू विच इज फाइव ट्वेंटी प्लस दिस वन वन इंटू टू सिक्सटी माइनस दिस इज फोर नाइंटी सिक्स now this will be just calculate this uh, we will get minus 115 so debt of x is equal to minus 115 and debt is equal to minus 5 remember the formula debt of to calculate x what is the formula debt of x by debt right or this one debt of uh, x by debt what is debt of x debt of x is minus 115 what is uh, val value of debt that is minus 5 so cancel this we'll get 23 as the answer 23 see we are asked to find out only the value of rupees in this case the value of rupees is x x x in the sense the coefficients right coefficient of x 1 represents the coefficient of x and x represents the rupee so just calculate we are we need to calculate only x if it were if we were asked to find out the value of 50 paisa coins that the or the number of 50 paisa coins then we would have we would take the value of debt of y or if we were asked to find out the value of the the number of coins of 25 paise coins then we would take the value of z debt of z so accordingly we will substitute we will solve uh, one more problem and we will end up the session now for what value of p does the following system of equations have a consistent set of infinite solutions if you remember the condition for the infinite infinite solutions debt is equal to 0 debt of x is equal to 0 debt of uh, y is equal to 0 debt of z is also equal to 0 if not just uh, refer the previous slides right this is the condition so just calculate the determinant determinant is 1 4 6 One four six. Just I'm taking. Uh, we have to take the coefficients. And what about the coefficients of uh, y? Two five and eight. And uh, then that of z is three minus six and minus m. What about debt of x? Debt of x is minus two four p two five eight three minus six minus m. while calculating debt of x ignore the coefficients of x and substitute the values um, of the coefficients uh, the constants what about debt of y debt of y is 1 4 and ignore the coefficients of y and substitute the values of the constants minus 2 4 and p and z is coefficients of z is coefficient of the first one is 3 minus 6 minus m okay first uh, we shall calculate the value of d here debt here this is 1 into 5 m 5 into minus m which is minus 5 m Minus six into eight, which is forty-eight. Minus forty-eight. Minus of minus plus plus forty-eight. Plus two into minus thirty-six plus four m. Plus three into two. So this will be equal to three m minus eighteen. 
is equal to 2 and m is equal to 6 if m as m is equal to 6 we can directly substitute here I'm just erasing this so minus 6 and this is minus 6 so m is equal to minus 6 that we got so we are left with debt of x debt of y so how to calculate debt of x the same method right minus 2 consider this to minus 30 plus 48 because 5 6 5 into 6 30 and uh, 6 into 8 48 plus 2 into minus 6 p plus 24 plus 3 into 32 minus 5 p we calculate this we will get p as 4 right so p is equal to 4 m is equal to 6 if p is equal to 4 then we can substitute this one with 4 now let me erase this so let us calculate debt of y debt of y is equal to 1 into 6 into 4 24 minus 24 plus minus of minus plus 24 and minus 2 into minus 36 plus 24 plus 3 into 4 into 4 16 minus 24 so this will be equal to 24 minus 24 this is equal to 0 so debt of y is equal to 0 we arrived this we arrived at this and what about debt of z debt of z is calculated as 1 4 6 2 5 8 p we know the value of p is 4 so okay substitute it now just calculate the determinant debt of z is equal to 1 into 5 into 4 5 into 4 is 20 20 minus 32 plus 2 into 24 minus 16 minus 2 into 32 minus 30 right so 5 into 6 is 30 okay so this will be equal to minus 12 plus 24 16 and 2 this is 16 and this is minus 4 so this is minus 16 plus 16 which is equal to 0 right so we also arrived debt of z is equal to 0 so when p is equal to 4 at 4 all the values are 0 right debt of z is equal to 0 debt of y is 0 so every each and every value is 0 at when p is equal to 4 so option c is the answer so whatever we covered the concepts uh, complete all the concepts please revise them and in the upcoming sessions we will look into the quadratic equations the logarithms the inequalities and all the algebra topics algebra is easy it's very important arithmetic and algebra right so arithmetic focus on arithmetic focus on algebra and don't miss any topic for cat don't ignore any topic but focus on two areas our advice is to be very strong at arithmetic as well as at algebra right and geometry modern maths we you can look into them as well you must look into them you must at least have some basic idea so that the, those can also be useful in your non-cat exams where the level of difficulty is not that much right if you haven't subscribed our channel do subscribe it also press the bell icon so you won't miss any update you can also join our telegram group revise them make a notes and practice them all the very best thank you